my name is Taylor Savage. Uh, I'm the product manager of the Polymer team here uh, at Google, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Polymer. So uh, it's become a bit of a tradition now at Chrome Dev Summit to give a Polymer State of the Union. So this is that talk. Um, so Polymer is, uh, for those who don't know, the web developer library that we build on the Chrome Open Web Platform team here at Google. It's a lightweight wrapper on top of the Web Components APIs, uh, the library is. And we also build a whole bunch of components on top of that library. So I'll talk a little bit about where Polymer has come uh, since one year ago uh, at Chrome Dev Summit last year. Kind of the general state of Web Components, which are these really fundamental APIs um, that Polymer leverages heavily. Uh, and then where we're headed, where the Polymer library, where the broader Polymer project overall is headed uh, in the near future. So let's roll back the clock a little bit. Uh, one year ago, this very conference, Chrome Dev Summit, uh, Matt McNulty, who's the Polymer uh, engineering lead, got up and announced a kind of a major new evolution in the Polymer library. So up until that point, um, Polymer was very much kind of an experimental library. It was all about experimenting with these new Web Components APIs, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't work, trying to build a developer wrapper uh, around Web Components to make sure that it was something that you know, both worked in the browser and also was something that developers could use and that were actually useful for building applications. And so what, what Matt announced a year ago uh, at, Chrome, at Chrome Dev Summit was Polymer 0.8. And Polymer 0.8 was a shift away from this experimental mode uh, because we had realized that you know, this, we were actually onto something here. Web components were pretty stable and solid and great. Uh, and this library was something that could actually be useful. So we shifted away from experimenting and towards building something that you could actually use uh, in production. So the goal was to kind of balance uh, and make trade-offs in keeping some of the great ergonomics and the great productivity gains that we'd achieved with the experimental 0.5 version of Polymer, uh, but also make it fast enough and you know, radically less complex to be something that you could actually ship uh, in production. So 0.8 we released uh, around this time a year ago. Major step forward. Still needed some time to bake. Uh, and at Google I.O. this past May, we announced Polymer 1.0. And this was the big production-ready release of the Polymer library. So Polymer 1.0 was essentially a ground-up rewrite of Polymer, again, trying to maintain uh, the same great ergonomics that Polymer had evolved over time, uh, but under the hood, kind of radically redesigning and simplifying everything to make it fast. Uh, so we redesigned the data binding system, rebuilt it from the ground up to be much more direct, uh, introduced a whole new styling system to be able to sh pierce through shadow roots when you're building these components uh, based on web components that was much more idiomatic and kind of the right, the right trade-off in terms of developer handles, uh, but also encapsulation. And we also uh, included a lightweight Shadow DOM shim called Shady DOM, rather than relying on the full heavyweight, uh, but a little over, over heavyweight um, Shadow DOM polyfill. So all of these things together made for a much kind of faster production-ready library uh, and at that time, uh, a number of products at Google launched with using Polymer, um, using, using this library in production. So how much faster was Polymer 1.0 from 0.5? Uh, quite a bit. It was three times faster on Chrome, uh, four times faster on Safari. It was also smaller. So it was also 36% smaller um, than 0.5. So this is a major step forward for the Polymer library. Um, it was also a major step forward for everything that we build on top of the Polymer library. So the Polymer team, in addition to working on this library, uh, builds sets of components. And traditionally, we had just had two kind of component sets. With Polymer 1.0, we dramatically expanded the scope of that uh, to include five element product lines, as we call them. Uh, the iron elements, uh, and these are elements that are built on top of the Polymer library to make it easier for developers to build applications on the web, leveraging web components. So iron elements were kind of the basic building blocks for what you might need to build an application. The paper elements were the reference implementation for material design. So these are all the components, the buttons, and the ripples, and the dropdowns, and the menus that you use to implement Google's material design language uh, on a web application. And I want to take the opportunity uh, to make totally clear, Polymer is a web components library. Uh, but building with Polymer, we've created these paper elements, uh, which these represent material design. Uh, so Polymer is not material design. Polymer is a web developer library. But we do ship these paper elements uh, to help developers as one of many of our element product lines uh, for material design. We also shipped the gold elements. So these were a small set of elements for building uh, good e-commerce checkout flows uh, on the web. So things like auto-completing credit card fields with the right markup uh, under the hood, auto-validating um, zip codes and locations and phone number fields to make it really easy to build a great checkout form or a great uh, e-commerce type form. We also shipped the Google Web Components. 
So these are wrappers around some of the APIs that Google, various Google projects provide, things like Google Maps and Google Drive and YouTube. Um, and instead of, you know, we take the imperative JavaScript APIs that these products provide and wrap them in a component so that you can use these declaratively on your page, uh, just like any other element. So this includes the Google Maps element, for example, which you can just put on your page and it renders a Google Map. And finally, uh, we announced the Platinum elements. So these were wrappers around Service Worker. And you've heard a lot about Service Worker today and all the amazing things that it can do. So the Platinum Elements are wrappers around a lot of these Service Worker features uh, to make it easier to leverage those in your application, again, declaratively, using the typical element syntax you're used to. Uh, and these let you develop a progressive web app you know, using declarative uh, components. So really exciting stuff with the Polymer 1.0 announcement. Huge step forward for the library, huge step forward uh, for the element product lines. Uh, but what about web components? So Polymer 1.0 was production ready. A number of Google products and products uh, that other companies were building are using it in production. Uh, but it could be even awesomer. It could be faster. And with that true encapsulation, to really get true encapsulation, true, use true reusability of these components, you need web components shipped broadly across browsers to really realize the potential uh, that web components have. So where are we uh, with web components? And I'm uh, very happy to say, uh, if you take nothing away from this talk, Please take this away. Web components are happening. Uh, incredibly exciting. They've been in the works for a long time. But in just the last six months, we've seen incredible movement across all the different browser vendors uh, towards shipping web components. So a little bit of a highlight reel here of what we've seen. This was a, a blog post from the Edge team. Uh, we are happy to announce that we are starting development to add HTML template element support to Microsoft Edge today. This is just the beginning of our web components journey, following template support. And after completing the DOM rewrite, the next goal is to implement Shadow DOM. And I'm very happy to say that Edge actually shipped template uh, just a week ago. So this, they, they are already shipping web components. Super exciting. Uh, great progress being made on the Edge team. They're doing some great work. Firefox Mozilla um, had this blog post not that long ago. Web components have been in planning for over three years, but we're optimistic the end is near. All major browser vendors are on board, enthusiastic, and investing significant time to help resolve the remaining issues. Let's get ready to componentize the web. And then finally, WebKit. So WebKit just recently uh, announced they are shipping the new Shadow DOM slot-based v1 API in WebKit Nightly. So you can actually play with this today uh, in Safari. It's out there uh, in the nightly build of this. Uh, incredibly exciting work uh, that the WebKit team has done with the Shadow DOM v1 uh, API. On the Polymer team, we will soon be shipping an experimental version uh, of this v1 slot-based API in our Shady DOM polyfill. So you can start playing with it and getting the feel of the ergonomics before it actually the Shadow DOM v1 slot-based rolls out broadly. Uh, so we want to give lots of time to, to prepare. Uh, but incredibly exciting work being done across all these different browser vendors. Web components are actually here. Uh, it's going to be not too long, and we'll be able to uh, have polyfills be the exception and not the norm. Um, so incredibly excited by all this progress. So web components have come a long way. Uh, Polymer's come a long way. We've seen a really great adoption of the Polymer library just since the 1.0 release you know, three or four months ago. So, Polymer in the wild, uh, over a million web pages are now using Polymer uh, on the current web. We had Polytechnics all around the world uh, run by our incredible Polytechnic organizers. These are events to learn all about Polymer and build with Polymer. Uh, literally every single continent except Antarctica um, that we had a Polytechnic event on. So incredibly exciting. And we've also seen some major companies uh, really adopting and leveraging Polymer web components in super interesting ways. Uh, so I want to talk a little about a few specific limitations that I think reflect the diversity of application uh, that you can have with Polymer web components. So the first uh, I want to talk about is GE. So GE's Predix platform. Um, it's, a, it's a cloud platform that you can kind of think of as uh, the operating system for the industrial Internet of Things. So imagine that you have a wind farm of wind turbines, and they're all generating data, and all that data is getting piped back in uh, to the Predix engine on the cloud, and you need a way to visualize all of this data that's coming in. And so what GE has built is a set of components using Polymer to be able to easily put together dashboards to be able to understand and visualize the data that's coming in. So awesome application, so a whole bunch of different components that can be pieced together to create a variety of different interfaces on these dashboards. And you get all this information uh, about your industrial Internet of Things just at a glance. So really perfect uh, use case for these components and a great application of it, an industrial level scale uh, that's deploying Polymer. Uh, the second company that I want to talk about is net porte So they are a major e-commerce company. Uh, and they've done some awesome work uh, using Polymer on their product pages. 
So a company like net a where you have a whole bunch of different products and a whole bunch of different product pages, and all the product pages are going to be slightly different. Some are going to have color swatches. Some are going to have to have size drop downs. Some are going to have additional information. Some are going to have also goes with sections. Uh, and they built each of these as a component, as a Polymer component. And so they can just put together these product pages out of these components. And all of these components are also naturally uh, responsive. So this same site works great on desktop. It works great on mobile. Uh, and it's a really great deployment uh, of Polymer at scale and to really leverage uh, building and sharing and using these components across all their different product pages on the site. And then finally, uh, Sumo. So Sumo, we've talked about a little bit, a Japanese real estate company that's really on the cutting edge uh, in terms of the web platform. They build some awesome stuff. Uh, they are just releasing today a mortgage interest simulator that's built in Polymer. So this is just a great example of a really immersive just app that feels great, that works on the web. Uh, you can put in all the different variables around your mortgage and get, get kind of what your payments would look like. So it's just a great material design app that uses all the Polymer components and has a great interface and works great on mobile. So really awesome work there. So kind of the broad spectrum from shared components to build dashboards to actually deployments on an e-commerce site uh, to just building a really great end-to-end -end app with Polymer. We're excited to see uh, all of this uptake uh, externally in the ecosystem. We're also really excited uh, to see uptake internally here at Google. So here at Google, um, over 320 projects are using Polymer internally, and that number is just growing every single day. Uh, we've seen some major Google products launch with Polymer 1.0 just in the last you know, four months that it's been out um, that are leveraging it you know, at scale in production. These include uh, products like YouTube Gaming, so this was a major launch not that long ago. This is built Polymer end to end. Uh, every single component that you can see on that screen is a Polymer component just about. Uh, and they use this to structure their application and get these really nice effects and really nice transitions. Similarly, Google Play Music. Uh, so this uses a lot of the paper elements to get that nice material design application feel. You can see the ripples and the drawer panels. Uh, and this uses Polymer to structure the application as well. Google Patents, a really snappy application uh, of Polymer just to be able to search patents and read information about each patent. Of course, the Google I.O. website, which was kind of a progressive web app before that term came about. Uh, it, was, it was at the Google I.O. conference this last year, built in Polymer. Uh, and this Chrome Dev Summit website for the conference you're at right now, also built in Polymer. And there are so many major Google products that are also using Polymer that haven't launched just quite yet uh, that I can't talk about today, but we're incredibly excited for those to launch as well. They also had, we had the first ever Polymer Developer Summit uh, in Amsterdam. That video of the uh, building with the big Polymer logo on the front was not Photoshopped. That was real. Uh, it's a, a, major, a major building on the river in Amsterdam. Just an incredible venue, an awesome event. We had 800 engineers there from all over the world uh, who were interested in Polymer and learning about Polymer. Uh, day to day, a whole full day of talks, uh, a night of code labs. All of those talks we recorded, and they're all up on YouTube. It's a great resource. We kind of go end to end from start to finish how you might build a component, how you might assemble components into an application. So if you're interested to learn more about Polymer and how you can use Polymer and build applications with Polymer, uh, the videos from the Polymer Summit are a really great resource. So of course, uh, the core Polymer team did not just give up and declare victory at 1.0 and leave and quit. Uh, no, very far from that. Um, so we've been working really, really hard to continually improve the library and all the elements that we're building. And kind of the two pillars, our two like, core values that we think about when we're building Polymer and we're building components, everything that we're building on the team, are ergonomics and performance. So ergonomics, how easy is it to build a component using Polymer? How easy is it to build a good component that you can compose with other components that you can compose into an application using Polymer? And then performance, how fast can you build something with Polymer? How fast is your end resulting app uh, when you've built it in an idiomatic way with Polymer? And so these things seem like they're a little bit of a trade-off, and they certainly are. Uh, you're, we're always balancing. We want to improve both ergonomics and performance. Uh, we're thinking about new things we want to build and ways to improve the library and components. On the ergonomic side, uh, since Polymer 1.0, uh, we've shipped a number of new features with the library, some of these very major features, things like compound binding, uh, things like uh, distributed children changes uh, for an element, uh, ways to share style sheets between components, a whole set of features uh, to make it easier to build components using Polymer. But we have this mantra on the team, uh, which is that every feature has a cost. Whenever you add a feature, you're adding some level of abstraction away from the platform, uh, just naturally. And so there's always going to be a cost to adding that feature. So whenever we're thinking about implementing a new feature, adding it to the library, we're thinking, what cost are we transferring onto our developers when we add this feature? So this is the constant trade-off. Um, so I'm really proud to say, even with all those features that we added since 1.0, 1.2, uh, the most recent release, 
uh, is actually 20% faster uh, than 1.0 was. Um, so this is great. And it, this is actually a conservative estimate. It, depending on your use case, it can be even faster. We've also worked hard to improve all the elements that we build with Polymer. Uh, we've made all of our elements faster and slimmer and more robust. Uh, and we also worked hard to improve the accessibility across all the elements. That's really, really important to us. Uh, so we want to be leading from the front in terms of both web component performance and web component accessibility. And so the entire engineering team is skilled up uh, in terms of making accessible web components. So we, we've kind of achieved, at least at this release, uh, a, a nice having our cake and eating it too. Uh, we've improved performance by adding features to the library. Uh, we've improved ergonomics. And we've also improved performance. And I think that the way we've been able to achieve that is because we're building the library, the Polymer library, up from the platform. We're relying on native platform features with web components and building up from there just as sugaring. So we're able to make really informed trade-offs in terms of just small kind of sugaring layers away from the platform and very targeted improve and add features while maintaining really good performance. I think that's a, a powerful uh, direction. So I want to I want to take a little time to, to think about that, about the web platform. Polymers come really far. Web components have come really far. The web platforms come really far. I think that's the theme that you're hearing uh, again and again today. And you know, the, the, the platform has come so far, we now have this concept of progressive web apps. With Service Worker, you're able to build applications that are resilient to flaky networks, that can send you push notifications, that can launch from the home screen without uh, the, the a Chrome around it. It's just an immersive application that you've built. Uh, it, this is the amazing platform that we have. Uh, and, and features like Service Worker and Web App Manifest really, truly make the web, finally, a first-class application platform, really, truly. For 90%, 99% of use cases out there, you can get everything you need building on the web with Service Worker and Web App Manifest and similar new features in the web platform. And these are largely developer-facing features. These are feature, I mean, sorry, these are largely consumer-facing features, features your users will see. Your user will see an app working offline. That's new. You usually will see an application, a web application, sending you a push notification. These are very truly user-facing features, and that makes it this first-class application platform. And it's changing the way that we can think about building applications on the web. Things we've never been able to do before as web developers could only dream of. We're now finally able to actually do in our web applications. That's really powerful. But the web has not only become, in just recent years, uh, and months even, a first-class application platform. I think with web components, with web components being a developer-facing feature, a feature that make our lives easier as developers in terms of structuring our apps, giving us fundamentally new primitives in the web platform for building components that are isolated and reusable, the web has really become a first-class developer platform. And this is huge. Uh, for so long, uh, the history of web development kind of follows this arc of doing lots of crazy things to try to avoid the web platform, to try to smooth over uh, its, edge, its rough cases. But I think we're at a really significant turning point now. Um, I think the web can be a really elegant platform. And with features like Web Components and features like Service Worker, we're now able to build applications on the web platform in ways that the platform intended us to build them. And that's really powerful. And by sticking to the platform now, we can build applications, and the platform can help us out. The platform can improve these features and improve performance, and we can gain from those features and performance improvements in the platform as long as we're building to the way that the platform intended. And so I think Web Components are just the seed uh, that's going to really, uh, really spread across kind of all of our norms that we've had taken for granted as web developers in terms of how we structure applications, how we build applications on the web platform, just in the same way that Service Worker uh, is going to change the way we think about what our applications can do for our users. So what's next? Uh, Polymers come a really long way, but we, uh, it's constantly growing. There are over 20 people working directly on the Polymer project currently, and that number seems to be growing uh, every week. Uh, so where do we, we kind of see this library going? Right now, the Polymer library, uh, it very much is a scalpel. So it's a very powerful tool when used in the right hands, but it's certainly still easy to make mistakes. And we want it to be easy just to build applications generally. So Polymer is great for building web components, but we think it should be easy to use components. It should be easy to build components. It should be easy to share components. It should be easy to optimize components. And it should be easy to assemble entire applications out of these components. So there are a few uh, kind of products uh, that we're working on right now to make this all easier, to make this a reality. Uh, the Polymer library is just kind of the first seed to be able to make it easier to build and share these components. So I'll talk about a few of the, of the things that we have in progress right now. Um, the first is it can be easy to make a mistake uh, when you're building a Polymer element. 
So very purposefully, uh, we want to keep Polymer lean and light. And so we don't include a bunch of error checking code uh, just to make sure you're not slipping up as a developer. We keep that out uh, of the library. So make sure that you're shipping only what you need down to your users. And so we still want to make it easy to find these, catch these mistakes before you have to you know, refresh your page and come across your bug yourself. Uh, and so we're really happy to announce uh, PolyLint, which is a project we've been working on uh, for a little while now uh, to be able to lint your Polymer code in line uh, in your text editor. So it is a node module uh, that you can also, it has plugins to common text editors like Atom and Sublime. Uh, it will find common mistakes uh, that you, make, you might make when developing a Polymer component, things like missing an HTML import. It'll notify you uh, when you're missing this, and it'll show you what line, uh, what component you're using that you haven't imported. Uh, things like if you're binding to a property that you haven't declared, it'll notify you that as well. Uh, even more subtle things uh, when you're building Polymer, things like binding the incorrect way uh, to a native attribute like class. So a whole slew of different uh, linting errors it will find as you develop. Um, so we think it'll be a really powerful tool. We're really curious uh, to see what developers, uh, what developers like and what more things we could find uh, with this linter. So please do check it out. Uh, it's in our Polymer Labs organization. Uh, everything we keep in the Polymer Labs, we like to develop everything out in the open. Um, so this has been out in the open for a while now inside of Polymer Labs. That's our kind of breeding ground for new products uh, that we want to get feedback on and, and learn more about uh, before we graduate them into the Polymer uh, organization. The second uh, new thing I want to talk about is PolyDev. So web components are a really, really powerful primitive. Uh, but you have to be cautious about you know, where you apply that really powerful feature. With great power you know, comes great responsibility. And so PolyDev, we want to give you better insight into how you're using web components effectively in your application to build a performant application. So what PolyDev is is a Chrome plugin uh, that goes into your DevTools pane. And it shows you the amount of time spent in various uh, custom elements that you're using in your page. So in this example, this is the Polymer Summit site. And it spends a lot of time if you're reloading between schedule and speakers in the schedule grid and the speakers grid, as you would expect. Uh, but it's really great for picking out particular examples where you might be spending more time than you think creating certain types of elements. And so it gives you uh, a nice visibility into what you might spend time optimizing uh, in your application. So this is in kind of a vein of products that we want to help ship to help better measure the performance of individual components and better see how those performance of those components contributes to the overall performance of your application. And so this is also available uh, up on the Polymer Labs organization uh, slash polydev. So and finally, um, a lot of the questions that we get about building applications with Polymer uh, revolve around these kind of ideas. You know, how do I structure my application? How do I lazy load sections of my app? How do I handle, how do I handle routing? How do I handle internationalization? And for so long in web development, the answer to all these questions has been use a framework. This is what frameworks were built for, to, make, to provide this entire suite of solutions for this kind of class of problems around application structure. And you really needed to use a web framework to be able to easily uh, get these things spelled out for you in, in terms of building an application. So for so long, you know, we've been building these very towering constructs uh, in JavaScript above the platform, really to give us any sense of coherent organization uh, of an application. But this can be kind of brittle. Uh, you can be like building you know, a Jenga tower on top of Legos. It requires you to buy into an overarching framework with you know, all of the things that cost that might come with that. You're adding layers of abstraction between you and the platform. In fact, you're not really building a web application anymore. You're building an application on the platform that is this other framework. And then that framework has to communicate uh, with the web platform. So there's this huge layer of indirection, source of bugs, source of performance overhead. And also, if a new platform comes along, as they tend to do, or a new framework comes along, as they tend to do, you tend to have to throw out all the components you've built for this framework. The framework components don't interoperate the way web components do. And so web components, as a new kind of fundamental primitive that is in the web platform, give us an opportunity to rethink a lot of the best practices that we've taken for granted for so long in terms of building applications, in terms of structuring applications. So on the Polymer project, we've been thinking about this a lot. We've been thinking about how, how do web components change the way we can think about how to structure an application top to bottom. They give us these really powerful new primitives. How can we apply them uh, to problems that you usually solve with a framework? So how might you solve a lot of these problems? How might you solve routing? How might you solve internationalization? How might you solve uh, application structure using components that you can swap in and swap out? when a new one comes along, that you can only pay as you go, only pay for the features that you're actually using in your application. So we talked about uh, the Carbon Elements project a little bit at the Polymer Summit. It's still a work in progress. 
Um, but this is our solution. It's what we're naming our solution for structuring top to bottom applications using components and leveraging components. And we want these to be, our goal with the polymer with the carbon elements is they should be as close to the platform as possible. They should be, again, a thin sugaring layer to be able to give you this coherent structure without making you buy in to entire framework, made, without making you buy in to all this overhead uh, in JavaScript. And we want them to leverage the best of the platform. We want them to be kind of the best, most elegant pieces that the web platform has. We want them to really use those uh, to their fullest so that it's easy to build the things with carbon elements. But we also want you to be able to swap out a different element to solve a different problem. If you want to use a different router, we want that to be easy. And we, want, we don't want to lock you in. Uh, we want these components to, to really be uh, plug and play. And so these are still very much uh, a work in progress, obviously building a whole set of components. These are a big, wide swath of problems to solve, uh, which are very challenging problems to solve. Uh, but I'm really happy uh, to announce our first kind of piece of this that we're opening up today, which are the app layout elements. So the app layout elements try to solve the problem of, you know, how do I structure the layout of my application? How do I get this responsive layout? And so we've had a few of these types of components in previous element sets that we've had. Uh, paper elements had paper header panel, drawer panel. Those were very much targeted toward material design type layouts. The app layout elements are meant to be much more general solutions for structuring application. So these are things like you know, a responsive drawer panel, a scrolling header panel that you can compose together, but we want them to be way more flexible. We want, them, we want you to be able to not just use them for material design language, but to be able to extend them and compose them together to create just about any kind of app layout design that you could possibly want. And so one example of a pattern that the app layout elements allow, uh, if you wanted a responsive layout, but you wanted tabs across the top on desktop, and you wanted uh, those same menu items to go into a side nav on mobile. And this is something that you couldn't do with the paper layout elements. With the app layout elements, you can do this. It's specifically meant for flexible types of adaptive UI uh, in this sense. So really, really would love to get feedback uh, from everybody on the app layout elements. They're also uh, under Polymer Labs. There's a nice splash page uh, with some documentation about how you can get started using them. And Rob, who's talking uh, next, will get, give a little bit more about these app layout elements. So the other features I talked about are very much a work in progress. Uh, we will open these up as soon uh, as there's something to play with in terms of routing, internationalization, and lazy loading. And last but finally not least, uh, I definitely want to give a big thank you uh, to our incredible community. Uh, these were some of the most active contributors to the Polymer Library and the Polymer Project overall in terms of uh, pull requests, in terms of great issues with great repros, uh, in terms of just support in our community on our mailing lists, on our Slack channel. So thank you so much. Uh, the project would not be anywhere near where it is uh, without this group of people. And this is by no means a comprehensive list. There are many more uh, that have dedicated a huge amount of time and, and really, really helped help the project grow. We also hope that this list continues to grow uh, as more people get involved. So thank you again so much, everyone. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I'm excited to see where the Polymer project goes. Please keep up with us on the Polymer blog and follow us on Twitter at Polymer. Uh, and thank you so much. <laughs>